Amen. The gospel is the reason why we're here. Amen. And by the way, uh, if you're new to our church, I want you to understand that it is our goal and our desire to have a gospel-centered church. Amen? Yeah. We're centered that what unites us is the gospel. There's people in our church that are in the low class. Some are in the middle class. Some are in the high class. And some have no class. But it doesn't matter. If you're saved, you're under the blood of Christ. Amen? Yeah. When we go to heaven, God will not check your college degrees. When you go to heaven, God will not make sure that you have your high school diploma. Uh, God is going to only going to look down and see if the blood of Christ is applied to you. And we have salvation through the blood of Jesus Christ. I'd like for you to take your Bible, Psalm 126 tonight, Psalm 126. We're going to be looking in Psalm 126 and Luke chapter 8. And we're going to learn how to be better soul winners, more motivated soul winners. Uh, uh, soul winners who understand that uh, our salvation is just through the J Jesus Christ. Amen? So we're Psalm 126. And then when you found it, I'd like for you to stand. Please stand and join me as we stand together. Psalm 126, verse 5 and 6. Can we read together, please, both verses? And uh, by the way, underline verses in the Bible that stick out to you. You say, oh, I like that. And God speaks to you. Underline it so you can find it again later. Amen. So, Psalm 126, verse 5. Read together. Ready, go. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we ask for your blessing now. Speak to us. Encourage us. Lord, we're, we, we want to be better soul winners for your glory. Lord, we want our lives to count for Jesus. And we pray that you would bless us now. Speak to us. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Thank you for standing. And uh, how many of you ever heard the words, don't raise your hand, kay, a little bit sakit, why pulos ka? Ever heard those words before? Why, Pastor, ako misis, sige siya ng ingon, why pulos ka? I don't know. Okay. Uh, but if you hear those words, very sakit. Sakto ko, sakto. Maybe you heard it from your mama. Why pulos ka? Or wakay pulos? Or maybe your papa, why pulos ka? You're useless. You're a useless individual. You're a useless person. And it is true. You can be a useless person. I've seen it. But did you know there is no Christian... There is no Christian who is still breathing that is useless. You are not useless in the kingdom of God. In fact, you can be useful in the kingdom of God by what? By being a soul winner. You can be a soul winner. Pastor, what is a soul winner? Soul winner is somebody who just shares the gospel. By, by the way, you cannot just share the gospel. You need to live the gospel. You cannot share the gospel while smoking cigarette. doesn't work. You cannot share the gospel while drinking tanduay. <laughs> it does not work. So, so what is the gospel? The gospel, very short, very quick uh, 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 summary, is the death, the burial, and the resurrection. The gospel is sharing God's reconciliation story to the world. That we were born in sin because the first Adam... He ate the forbidden fruit, so death passed upon all men for that all of sin. But through the second Adam, Jesus Christ, our representation, we have salvation for our sins. But you can only receive this salvation by faith in Christ. It's a very simple thing. There are many people that believe you are born saved. I heard one person say, a very educated person, educated Tao, Kono. But She said, we are all children of God. No, we're not all children of God. We are all children of the devil. And we need to be saved. We need to have faith in Jesus Christ. I want to talk to you about bearing precious seed. Or simply, bear the precious seed. We'll have our title up there quickly. Bear the precious seed. And Pastor, what does that mean? Well, the precious seed, of course, is the gospel. Quickly go back to our main text, and then we're going to look at another text that will give us foundation for our main text. But the Bible says, They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. They that, he that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed. 
shall doubtless come again with rejoicing. Just by way of introduction, let's go to Luke chapter 8. Luke chapter 8 in your Bible quickly. And before we understand our lesson, we need to understand the, the precious seed. What is the precious seed? What is that seed? Luke chapter 8, please look at verse number 5. I want you to follow me in your Bible as we read. The Bible says, verse 5, just follow me with your eyes. A sower went out to sow his seed. Now, what is a sower? A sower is somebody that, sh that spreads seed on the field. So the field is already tilled. Uh, how many of you have seen the daro making the linya in the field? Have you seen that before? Okay, and then after the daro makes the linya in the field, somebody comes along and they start doing the planting. Sometimes they do one here, then one here, then one here, and they keep going down till all the lines have plants. All the lines are, are planted. But sometimes they'll have to plant, not through transfer, but they have to plant with seeds. And of course, they cannot do one seed here, one seed here. They have to just take the seed and throw it. They take the liso from the baldi and they just throw it. And they take the liso from the baldi and they just throw it. Now they're hoping that the liso will get a hold and start to grow. What I'm going to share to you now, this is a fundamental truth for the Christian. Please understand, right now, you are one of the four. You are one of the four. There's no, uh, Pastor, I'm a little bit of one, a little bit of two. No, no, no. You are one of the four. I, you know, Pastor, I'm a little bit of three and a little bit of four. No, no. You are one of the four. Pastor, what do you mean? There are four classes of yuta. Nga ang liso mag -abot. Please go with me. Luke chapter 8. Look at verse number 5. A sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, the duplin. It was trodden down, and the fowls of the air devoured it. The birds ate the seed. And some fell upon a rock, and as soon as it was sprung up, it withered away because it lacked moisture. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up with it and choked it. And others fell on good ground and sprang up and bare fruit an hundredfold. And when he had said these things, he cried, He that has ears to hear, let him hear. And his disciples asked him, saying, What might this parable be? So the disciples asked, What's the meaning the eye? Sa kining parable. Nga upat klase sa yuta. Na ay liso, ang angliso, angliso mo abot siya sa upat kaklase sa yuta. Tanawas sa verse 10. Unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to others in parables, that they seeing might not see, and hearing they might not understand. Now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. So the seed is the what? The word of God. Those by the wayside are they that hear. Then cometh the devil, and taketh away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. Now look at verse, look at the first yuta. The first yuta is the duplin, or underline verse 12, the wayside. The wayside. Look at verse 13. They on the rock are they which when they hear, receive the word with joy. Lipay kayo. And these have no root, which for a while believe, and in time of temptation fall away. So these are the, the, the stony ground nga batoon ang yuta nga ang liso ni gro gamay. Pero tungod sa, look at this, these have no root which for a while believe, they really believe, oh Jesus is the answer. This is what I'm looking for. But the Bible says, and in time of temptation fall away. Pero tungod sa lisod, maybe some bad decisions in life. Maybe, maybe na ay struggles of pagtoo, but the Bible says they fall away. There's many Christians that said, I will never fall away. But one year, two years, three years, walay simba. Up upat ka simana, walay basa Bible, walay ampo. Duha ka um, uh, uh, buwan, walay ampo, walay, walay simba. After six months, walay simba, walay ampo. And then they, you, have, you need to understand, maybe you're this kind. Maybe you are a stony ground. You heard the word of God, but the word of God has not taken root. You enjoyed for a season, but you have not grown. Look at verse number... What's that? verse? Verse 10? 
Oh, 14, sorry, sorry. Verse 14. And that which fell among thorns are they which when they have heard go forth and are choked with the cares and riches and pleasures of this life. I want you to notice a couple of things here. Pastor, why is it that some people are rich and some people are not rich? What's, what's the reason why? Well, did you know that being, being poor can be a bad thing? And it can be a good thing. Being rich can be a good thing and it can be a bad thing. See, there are people who are poor not because, uh, not because they're not working. They're working hard. They just don't have a good job. It makes sense, amen? But there are people who are poor because they're lazy. There are people who are poor because they're bishoso. There are people who are rich and God's blessing them and they're faithful in church. But there are people who are rich and they have so much money that they take their money and don't use it for the Lord. And they miss blessing. In fact, maybe they have opportunity to serve God and with their money to use, God, to use that money for the Lord, but they choose to spend it on the pleasures of this world. And that's what the Bible speaks of here. So there are Christians that might be like thorny ground. So let's review. There are people who hear the word. They like it, but they never get saved. Those are the dappling, the wayside. Then the liso arrives on stony ground. And the Bible says it grows for a while, but the first trial comes and you'll never see them again. Maoni ang young people nga lipay kayo sila. Hala, nindot kayo, save jud ko. Nagatin ko diri sa GCBC for last two months. Bless jud ko. And then after a while, ma, gana ko mabaptize. And then the mama says, Ay, ano lang, di ba? Ano lang, lahing lang kito. And then, Ay, para peace na lang, pastor. Para peace lang sa among balay. Di jud ko mabaptize, pastor. And then after a while, naglayo sila sa ginoo. And sayang, you never see them again. I have, I have a prayer list full of number two. But number three are the young people. These are the Christians. They come to church. They grow. They're faithful. They have grown. There is evidence. They're saved. But the problem is because of the cares of this world. It could be something like, I have to care for my mother. My mother is sick. And by the way, care for your mother. If your mother is sick, say amen. But then all of a sudden, they miss one service, they miss another service, they miss another service, and now they're not growing anymore in the Lord. It could be your number three. But the last one is number four. Look at number four in Ayut Nat Dere. We're in Luke chapter 8, and the Bible says in verse number 15, read together, But that on the good ground are they which in an honest and good heart Having heard the word, keep it and bring forth fruit with patience. Notice this, fruit with what? Patience. Fruit with patience. Don't think I'm newly saved. I want to be matured Christian in three months. <laughs> wow, that's pretty good. By the way, it could happen. I've seen it happen before. But three months later, you're still a baby Christian, but you're still growing. Please understand, have what? Patience. Have patience. Be like a doctor. Have patience. Amen? That's a different kind. But have patience. I like the sign on the back of the car. It says, new driver, please be patient. Isn't that funny? So, kung dili no driver, no patience needed. Amen? <laughs> Weird kayo. Okay? But how many of you are glad that God is patient with you? Yes. I love the song that we sing. He's still working on me to make me what I ought to be. It took him just a week to make the moon and the stars, the sun and the earth and Jupiter and Mars. How loving and patient he must be. He's still working on me. But you know, just as God is working on you, the Bible says that we must also be patient. Why? Because the fruit will come. The, some of you, you get discouraged because you're not what you thought you would be in one year of being saved. Maybe you're saved, Pastor, I've been saved for three years now, but I'm still struggling with this sin. Hey, be patient. Padayon. Padayon, be patient. But this is speaking of the gospel. 
And this is speaking how the gospel arrives on the first Utah, the Duplin. Illustration, ang mga langgam, they come and they eat the seed. The langgam are very happy. By the way, a libat, a libat, what's it called? What do they call it? Sower? What, what do you call it? We take the liso and you throw it? Is that? Tigpugas? A libat tigpugas makes very happy langgam. Amen? Okay? Okay. You can, that's a proverb, okay? The langgam are very happy. Kinsay ang tigpugas, ah? Tigpugas karon kutong libat. Eh, the, the, the langgam are happy. Kay mo abot sa, sa simento, mo abot sa swalto, ang mga langgam lipay kayo sila. Okay? But then you have the stone, the, the stony ground. And, and by the way, you might be number two, Karon. You, you're really growing. You, you, really, you have a root. You're saved na. But the truth is, the first lisod that comes. By the way, it's very funny. Young people are funny. Uh, I, I wrote a balak. If you want to... Uh, uh, the young people also did a video to support my balak. I thank you for that. I do send some bugalun. I do send some. But it's okay. I'll, I'll take it. Na lang. I'll take it. It's my first one. Young people are funny. Lord, I will serve you in the youth camp. This is like Thursday night. Lord, I will serve you. I give you my heart. And then Saturday, extension class. Ay, kapoy ko. Kapoy. Kapoy. <laughs> kapoy. Next time, lang, Pastor. Ay, kapoy man ko. Kapoy. Okay. Lord, I will serve thee because I love thee. I will serve you. Brad, uh, see you later sa evening service. Oh, na evening di ay. Uh, Pastor, busy man ko. Pastor, busy. Okay. It's very funny. There's, there's many, uh, stony ground is unique because stony ground, you grow sa, but the first thing that comes, you know, there are many Christians, stony ground, they were growing until they got a job on Sunday. And it's the only job they could find now. The only job they could find. I can find you a job that doesn't work Sunday. I can find you a job. Go to, go to Grand Mall and buy 10 chicharons for five pesos and sell them for seven pesos. Amazing. I don't know how much you'll make. You'll make 70 pesos in one day. Hey Amen. That's pretty good, actually, for doing not much, okay? You can, there's always something you can do. Hey Amen. But there are young people, I, I will serve thee because I love thee. And then the first opportunity to work on Sunday, I'll, I'll take it. Okay, I'll take it. That's my job. And then all of a sudden, layo sa ginoo, you might be a stony ground. You are saved, but not growing. Then there's the thorny ground, which is unique. A little bit more established ng Kristohanon. A little bit more established. But then, the cares of this life. Do you know what that means? The cares of this life? It translates to modern English, bills. Bills. Not bill, bill. Bills. How many of you young people, you're like, when I grow up, I'm going to get all these things. I'm going to get a motor. I'm going to get a house. I'm going to get up and down the house. I'm going to do this and all these things. But you don't realize to get those, it, you have to pay bills. Hala, unsani amortization? That means you have to pay bills for 30 years. I just want to buy motor. Okay, no problem. You have to pay a bill every month for the next half decade. Can I just, can I just get it now? I have 500 pesos. Okay. That's not how it works. But then you start getting the cares of this world and the gospel does not grow in your heart. You never become a soul winner. Never become faithful. In fact, you're the kind of Christian that comes to church, tagsa, kung bakante, pag my time. Ang imong spiritual life is pag my time. So, you only grow pag my time. Bible reading, pag my time. Prayer life, pag my time. Simba, pag my time. And you wonder why God is not working in your life. Now, the first three yuta is not where God wants us to be. God wants everybody to be on the good ground. Amen. But let's admit, let's admit, maybe you're not on the good ground, maybe you're on the thorny ground. Tukan ba? Tukan. Maybe you're here on the stony ground. Maybe you're not yet saved. So this is what the Bible declares, the upat kaklase sa yuta. The liso arrives on the four class of yuta. Quickly go back to Psalm, 50, Psalm 126. Quickly, Psalm 126. And our quick Bible study tonight. I hope this is a blessing to you as we study the scripture tonight. Amen? So Psalm 126 verse 5. 
they that sow in tears shall reap in joy. So if you sow the gospel in tears, you reap in joy. So number one, there is hardness in being a soul winner. There is hardness in being a soul winner. Being a soul winner is not easy. Being a soul winner is not easy. Ganina, we're going soul winning. I'm so blessed to see people going out. The rain is coming down and the people are going out. It's baliktad. Everyone else is running inside. But then the members of GCBC are going outside. I don't know kung buang. Or ang possibilidad, love the Lord so much. It's worth it. So when we think of hardness, we think of hard physically. It is hard physically. Did you know, I remember uh, uh, we visited someone before, Brother M, uh, over in Pasilagon. And then I, I said, before we visit you, where do you live? I said, uh, what's the, the name of the place? It's on the very top, Bungtod? Bungtod? I think it's said Bungtod. I said, I, I said, asa ka na po yo? He said, sa bungtod. I said, ah, okay, barangay bungtod? Si Chu bungtod? He said, no, sa bungtod. So, itong babaw? He said, ang babaw, mao na ang sungod, padulong sa bungtod. <laughs> so, we went there to the bottom. I don't know if you remember, you were with me. Went to the bottom, and I looked up. Um, it looks like Osmania Peak. So I messaged him, Brad, pwede ka naog lang kay that. Layo ka, ayo. So we meet there at the bottom. He's very happy we went to visit him. But mga kaigsunan, physically, the, there is hardness in being a soul winner. It is hard physically. Not only physically, it's hard emotionally. It's hard when people say no. No. It's hard when they, bad, when they malikas you. They give you bad words because you're, you're trying to share the gospel. And they, they tell you, how many experienced that before? They give you bad words or nagyaw yao. And it's a hard thing. Spiritually, when it's time to share the gospel, that's when Satan attacks. When it's time to share the gospel, that's when Satan moves in. Satan says, hey, it's my time. I don't want you to be a soul winner. I don't want you to share the gospel. But the Bible says that those who sow in tears reap in joy. There is hardness in being a soul winner. I don't know about you, but I believe every soul winner along the way has asked this question, is it worth it? Is it worth it? Is it worth it for me to expend all my time, effort, and energy to share the gospel to people that might or might not get saved? Is it worth it? Amen. The answer is, it is worth it. Is it, is it worth it when somebody in 1976 gave somebody a gospel track and that guy said, Nyeh. he threw it on the ground and Peter Denisi walked by and says, oh, what's this? He put it in the shirt pocket and then went home and then he's gathering his bulingon and then he says, oh yes, he sat down on the bed and he read it and he got saved. Amen. Is it worth it? Amen. I don't know who that was, but we can go to heaven one day and find out who that was. Isn't that pretty cool? Amen. Uh, some of you, uh, is it worth it when I said, Brother Obet, can you take over the extension class in Mabolodos? And Brother Obet took over the extension class in Mabolodos. But for some reason, nagtapok sila sa kapilya. I don't know why. Nagtapok sila sa kapilya. And then, ang pari na suko. Nga naman, nag-Bible study mo sa kapilya. This is no place for the Bible. Wano yung ingon? Okay. <laughs> this is no place for the Word of God. Okay. But one of the young ladies there, young girls, Altea, she said, Kuya, Kuya, ato lang ta babaw. Okay raman yun sa akong papa. They went up there, Kuya Amir, not yet saved. I don't know, maybe he's still smoking. Maybe he's still drinking. But they got there, and then si Kuya Amir, na asya igsoon, si Ate Noemi, and then Berjundi, and then, is it worth it? Yeah. Is it worth it to share the gospel? Is it, is it worth it that, that somebody would get... Is it worth it that many years ago, many years ago, we arrived in Benilad Night High School? Is it worth it? Is, it? is it worth it that many years ago, there was a young boy from Opon who lived on the boardwalks in Opon? Is Ate Ethel here? Not Ate Ethel? Not Ate Ethel there. He, he's, he said, Pastor, come to my house and visit my house. I said, where is your uh, house? He said, we're on the seaside village. I said, wow, seafront property? He said, yeah, I like that, like that. But you go to their house, and then to get to their house, you have to walk on the boardwalks. And then some of the boards is missing. 
So I'm thinking, patay gyud sa gabi, maybe na mohulog. Okay? And I walk there, and then we got there to the house, and finally we arrived in the house, but the house is already half into the dagat. It's already leaning into the dagat. But it's worth it. Why? Because now today, Kim is here, Clinton assisting Pastor Peter in the sipit. Is it worth it? Yes. It's always worth it. But Pastor, I like, to, I like your stories, Pastor. It's so nice. Pastor, why do you have so many stories? Do you know why? Because I go. And you never know if you never go. The whole basic idea of Psalm 126 is found in verse 6. Look at the first three words. He that goeth. He that goeth. What does that mean? That means this joy only applies to, are you ready? He that goeth. Pastor, I'd like to see other people saved. Wow, wonderful testimony. Wow, can you do it? But this joy only applies to he that goeth. Be a soul winner. You know, the, the man that's here, Ganina, some of you don't know him. But he was the manager of Emperador Cotobato. The, the main manager of sales. 35 years retired. He's on the Emperador pension. Kinsa diritig Emperador Casona. Brother Paulo is smiling there. Okay. Now, Pastor, more on 35. What's 35? Tatando hai. Okay. But you know, he got saved six months ago. Six months ago that Kuya got saved. God changed his life. His pastor called me and said, My newly saved disciple is going to Talamban. Please follow him up. I follow him up. Now he's here. But he might be going back to Jensen Lang. But what a blessing. The gospel still saves people. Amen. Amen? The gospel still saves. There's nobody that the gospel cannot save. I remember Brother Joner one day walking in. He walked like this. Luspad. But he was in deep depression. Suicidal thoughts. Diba? Sakto? And then his sister gave him directions how to come here. But why claro ang directions? Why claro? Ni saag siya gamayin. Asi si Jen. Nasi Jen yun diri. Nasa diri. Wala siya diri. Sister gave directions. Maybe she got lost. She didn't follow her directions. Okay. <laughs> she came here and then, and then I said, Brother Sam, can you share the gospel with this man? Because I really think he needs to get saved. He got saved. Third year Bible student na. Amen. Amen? Pastor, amen. God is done with him. God, God's, no, God just got started. Some of you are so discouraged with other church mates. I don't know why she treat me like that. I do my best, but she does not appreciate. I don't know, Pastor. It hurts me. She's only saved for three months. What do you expect? <laughs> She's only been saved less than five years. I mean, God's still working on her. Same sa imo. Unsa man ka? Santos ka? Are you with us? Amen? So number one, there is hardness in being a soul winner. It is hard. The Bible says you sow in tears, but you reap in joy. Number two, there is harvest for the soul winner. There is harvest for the soul winner. Number one, there is hardness in being a soul winner. But number two, number two there is harvest. There is harvest for the soul winner. The Bible says, if you go, you what? You will reap in joy. You will reap in joy. So the Bible says, if you go, then you will reap. Look at verse 26, please. He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing. Oops, there's a promise from God. So the Bible says that the Christian who goes, he that goeth, will. By the way, why do da? This is confirmed. Write it down. A hundred percent. It will happen. It is said by God that you will experience joy. And the joy of being a soul winner is a joy that cannot be replicated from anything else. You, there's nothing in this world you can do. You can join the basketball league of the mayor's select team. By the way, I have a friend before. He was on the mayor's select team. He was a good shooter, three-point assassin. I led him to the Lord. He got saved, and then he got killed in car napping. His life ended just like that. 
I think he died age 23, 24. That was his life. So there's, you can do a lot of things. There's many things you can do with your life, but there's nothing that you can do that will bring true joy like being a soul winner. Knowing that my life really counts for Jesus. Knowing that my life matters for somebody else. Somebody was walking down the ocean one day. They were walking down the ocean and they noticed the whole ocean was full, uh, uh, the whole dagat on the balas, the starfish. You know the starfish? Now what happened is the high tide came in and the starfish came all the way to the front and the low tide went out too fast. The starfish were too slow. So what happens to the starfish if they're left on the dagat? What happens to them? Mamatay sila. So, I mean, like thousands and thousands of starfish on the sand. The man woke up early in the morning doing his morning walk, and as he's walking, he noticed all the starfish, and he's a lover of the sea. He loves the dagat. So he picked one starfish and threw it back in the water. He picked up another starfish and threw it back in the water. And he picked up another starfish and threw it back in the water. And somebody commented, Sir, why are you doing that? They're all going to die anyway. And he said, he picked up one, and he said, not this one. He picked up another one and said, not this one. He picked up another one and said, not this one. That's what soul winning is. Lord, just give me some soul to win. And I know it's going to be hard. I know it's not easy. I know that it takes a physical toll, an emotional toll, a spiritual toll. But Lord, you're the Lord of the harvest. And Lord, I want to be part of the harvest. Are you with us? The Bible uses the word sheaves. Sheaves. Now the question is, what is a sheave? Somebody said, uh, about that thought, the word sheaves, guys, sheeps. Bringing in the sheeps, bringing in the sheeps. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheeps. And actually, it's not doctrinally incorrect. All ye like sheep have gone astray. But the bata thought, bringing in the sheeps. But it's not sheeps, it's sheaves. Here's a question, why? Why does the Lord use the word sheaves? You know, a sheave is a bundle, is a bundle of singular harvest. In this instance, probably some kind of a wheat harvest. A bundle. Every, every, every grain that pops out there, you wrap it together and, it's, and you wrap it together and you bundle it together and that's one sheave. You know, every Christian, at the end of your life, you will present a sheave to Jesus. Amen. Bringing in the sheaves. Bringing in the sheaves. Bringing in the sheaves. We shall come rejoicing. Bringing in the sheaves. Bringing in the sheaves. Bringing in the sheaves. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. And one day when we get to heaven, our task for soul winning is done. And you will present your sheave to Jesus. It's very sad if your sheave is so small. Now this is metaphorical language, huh? It doesn't mean that we're going to literally bring a harvest of wheat to Jesus, but we will bring a harvest of souls. So let your life count for Jesus. Let your life count for Jesus. There's a harvest. By the way, in this harvest, God wants us, God wants to bless us in our faithfulness. He that goeth. Remember those words, he that goeth. So if you go, then doubtless you will come again rejoicing, bringing your sheaves. So God will bless the faithfulness and he will bless the faithfulness by blessing the fruitfulness. The fruitfulness. You, how many just want to be a fruitful Christian? Pastor, I don't want to be a Christian that I just go to church and then the rest of the week I'm just not serving God. I want to serve God every day. I'm going to give you some advice. Ready? You can be a soul winner every day. You don't have to be a soul winner only during soul winning time at church. <gasps> really? Pastor, that means I can be a soul winner wherever I go? I was really blessed before. I think it was uh, Brother Warren told me that uh, uh, Brother Tommy and Mom Dora, when they're delivering the isda, they bring gospel tracks. Amen. Bring gospel tracks going through Guba, Adlaon, Siro, Kabinokot, Siro, Siro Uno, Siro Dos, Flower Garden. How about the Flower Garden? 
Adilin, sorry. Ubus, ubus. All right there. And then selling fish and then gospel track set. Amen. I mean, the, what do you believe on gospel track? Huh? Okay, okay. That's free, but not free. But this sharing the gospel, sharing the seed, sharing the seed, sharing the seed. You know the jail ministry here? Talamban Jail Station 8. It's a ministry that is unique because those are the worst of the worst in, in Talamban. The worst of the worst. Those are the criminals in Talamban. And we've been sharing the gospel for many years. They're sharing the gospel for many years. And those, they go back to their homes and the gospel is planted in their heart. You know, we're still waiting for the harvest. But the harvest will come. Because the Bible says, when you sow in tears, you reap in joy. Please consider that there is a harvest for the soul winner. Not only is there a harvest for the soul winner, but uh, do I have number three, please? Number three. There is honoring that God does. There, there is an honor that God gives the soul winner. So if you go, the Bible says, he that goeth, the Bible says God will honor the going. He will honor that. He will doubtless come again rejoicing. I don't know about you, but we're living in a world that is worse and worse to live in. Did you know right now, this is Dep Ed, huh? Dep Ed, public school, teaching the children how to dance. And not just dance, dirty dancing. The sexual kind. Ilang disco, disco. And then all under the, the guise of multiculturalism, but dili na ko, dili na Christian. It's, it's, it's very worldly. Dili na maayo. But not just that, they're also teaching the children mandatory, because of Robin Padilla, mandatory Muslim Islam Quran training. Pastor, only for the schools in Mindanao, right? Like, like the, the autonomous region. No, all Deped. Already. Not only that, but also in Deped right now, even in Talamba National High School, teaching Hindu prayers for the children, the high school students, to pray to the Hindu demonic gods already in Dep Ed. Are you, so, are you listening? So this world we're getting in is not getting better, it's getting worse. To be honest, it's very goal. You, watch, you, you, you open up Facebook and then after you scroll, scroll, you're more goal than when you logged on. How many experience that? But I'm just going to watch some news. 24 hours. And you watch the news. And after watching the news, after watching the balita, you are more depressed than before you watched it. Did you know I watched the, uh, the, 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 the I scroll, scroll. In the last week in Cebu, three kidnappings of children. One ended in death. One ended in recovery. The other one is still missing. One kidnapping in Labangon, dead. One bata kidnapped in Mandawi, found. Another bata kidnapped in Lapu-Lapu, not found. This is within the last five days. Gool. Are you with us? But you know something in these last days, you know what brings joy? Knowing that you're building the kingdom of God. The Bible says that this joy is a joy that you will doubtless have. You will come again with rejoicing. You'll be happy. You'll have joy. There is joy in serving Jesus. And God honors he that goeth. Last one tonight and we're done. Not only do I see that there is hardness in being a soul winner. Not only is there the harvest for the soul winner. Not only is there honoring that God does for the soul winner. But lastly, there is help that God gives the soul winner. There is help that God gives the soul winner. God did not send us to bring the gospel without his help. Quickly take your Bible, go to Matthew 28, please. Matthew 28 in your Bibles. And this is the Great Commission. I know that you're very familiar. This is the heartbeat of our church. We want to obey God. And we want to obey Christ and His commission. By the way, we are a fellowship where we fellowship the commission of Christ. So we are like a CCF. Amen? Okay, like. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, verse 18, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things. Whatsoever I have commanded you, I, oops, I command you, I. But look at this. 
This is the sumpai to the command. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. So God, God promises us that in verse 18, all power, God promises his power. In verse number 28, he promises his presence. Please understand. I told, by the way, I was having some training in with Brother Jojo and Brother Robert. They're soul winning each other. Practice, practice soul winning. Did you know that you, if you're a soul winner, you'd never have to feel intimidated because you have what they need. You have what they need. They need what you have. Act like it. They need Jesus Christ. You have, you are the vessel that carries to them peace of mind that they're looking for. You're the vessel that carries to them the glue that will put their family back together. You have the, you have the peace that comes in knowing that you can be a child of God. You have it. Act like it. Say, so excuse me, I'd like to share to you about the word of God. How you can know for sure that you're going to go to heaven. And if they say, I want me oras ana, okay, no problem. I shared the gospel to somebody before. I said, Would you be willing to accept Christ as your Savior? He said, Brad, dick already. I said, Oh, hey, no problem. Why problem, Brad? No problem. I cannot focus you to receive Christ. But pwede sa ko review. He said, Yes, no problem. I said, So we talked about that, that all are sinners, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I said, we talked about that. I said, yes, yes. And the Bible says we're all sinners and we are all going to go to where? You tell me. He said, hell. I said, okay, I'll see you later. <laughs> Bye. I don't know if he got saved, but he said he was not ready. But I made sure he understands what he's rejecting. I made sure he understands where he's going to go if he dies. He said it, not me. Please understand, we have the precious seed. Bear the precious seed. You know, every Christian should have a good study Bible. Have a good study Bible. Have a good study Bible. I know a good study Bible. Katong dako kayo ba? Big words. Why big words? Trust me. As you get older, you appreciate. Amen? Okay? Kisa kisa kasabot. Kisa kasabot. Okay? Okay? Oh, honey, you eyeglass any day. Okay, how many did that? You wore your wife eyeglass by accident. Anybody tried that one before? By accident, okay. But you also need to have, you need a sword and you need a dagger, small knife. Get a small soul winner's New Testament, small. So you can put it in your pocket, put it in your sling bag, put it in your purse, and wherever you go, you have your weapon. Wherever you go, no problem. You can say, hey, this is what the Bible says. Hey, do you know Jesus Christ? Hey, Jesus died for you. And you're ready. You have that there with you. You know, God will help you. Don't be afraid. Amen. God promises to give you his power. Well, that's pretty good. Because, Pastor, I have no power. I, I don't know what to say. It's okay. God will give you the power. God will give you the words to say. Pastor, I don't know if I can do it. I just, I just, I need somebody to help me. God says, I'll give you my presence. God will be there. Don't worry. God, will, God does the saving, not you. You know, today I really believe this. I believe that churches don't grow because the people, the, the members don't go soul winning. Churches don't grow because the members don't go soul winning. Be a soul winner. Be a soul winner. Don't say, Pastor, I'm praying for my family to be saved and my friends and workmates to be saved. Okay? Don't, don't, don't pray that if you're not willing to share the gospel to them. Amen? Be the instrument, be the vessel to share the gospel to them. And you know what will happen? Here's the result. The Bible says, the result is J-O-Y down in my heart. Deep, deep down in my heart. Are you, are you, are you excited to be a soul winner? Pastor, I like to be a soul winner, but I'm still, I'm, I don't know yet. I, I, I still don't know. Well, how about we do this? Brother Warren, what about next week? Well, next Sunday afternoon, 3.30 p.m., soul winning training. Okay lang? Soul winning training. The mga veterano nga soul winners, pwede magawas. 
you can go out, but maybe we'll have a soul winning training. If you're not yet a veteran soul winner, you don't know what to do. Pastor, I don't even know what to say. Night training, did he? Night training. We'll have a training next week. Okay, lang? 3.30. Why? Because with this church, by the way, look at, look at, this is Sunday evening, puno. Sunday evening, puno. But, not by space, not by space, did he say, sa ayol, not by space aside, put a choir loft, maglingkod, aside there. I think there's still about space for 100. Maybe, I, maybe like, maybe like 20, uh, maybe 30 here. Maybe another 30 there on the stage. Uh, maybe some quiet chairs there. And maybe, maybe even 30 to 50 on that side. There's plenty of space. Let's get them in. But it can only happen. Are you ready? This blessing. Uh, by the way, how many of you would be happy to see that? Amen. How do you be happy? Pastor, amen. But put the air con below, Pastor. No problem, but you have to give. That's a different message, amen? That's a different message. This is not the give. This is the go. So this blessing comes to he that goeth. Be the Christian who is a labud in that phrase. He that goeth shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. Let's all stand together, please. We'll have our pianist, Oscar, if you could play that song, Bringing in the Sheaves. This invitation is open. Heavenly Father, Lord, bless now. Speak to us. Help us to be soul winners for your glory. Pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Pastor, please pray for me. I want to be a better soul winner. I want to be a better soul winner. I want souls to be the heartbeat of me. I want to have the heartbeat of God. I want to, I want to win souls for Christ. Pastor, please pray for me. You like that. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Let's do this. Find a place and talk to the Lord. The altar is open. You come. Just talk to the Lord. Lord, make me a soul winner for your glory. Find a place. Talk to the Lord. Heavenly Father, God, we're blessed, Lord, to know that the joy that comes in serving you is available to us. But Lord, help us to have a heart that goeth, not just a heart content just to be a church member and show up for service, but a heart, Lord, that loves souls, a heart that wants to present a sheave to you one day, a bundle of souls that were saved because of the opportunities that you afforded us. We love you, Lord. We submit this to you, God. Help us to be the soul winners you want us to be. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen.